between 50 and 70 billion cells in your body die every day from both natural and pathogenic causes. There are two main mechanisms of cell death, apoptosis, a good cough, I drink a little more coffee than I probably should. <laughs> and necrosis, the bad cough. With necrosis and apoptosis have the same end goal, cell death. But how they go about it varies considerably and will be the focus of this video. Apoptosis is the process of programmed cell death highly regulated and controlled process. The main function of apoptosis is to maintain regular cell function and normal cell activities. Apoptosis is a strictly regulated process and requires specific signals from the surrounding environment and ATP energy to begin. Morphologically, apoptosis features an overall shrinking of the cell. Upon signaling for apoptosis, chromatin aggregates at the nuclear membrane and the membrane loses its integrity allowing the membrane to shrink and the cell to separate into apoptotic bodies. DNA in apoptotic cells is non-random and is fragmented before cell death. It only affects individual cells in response to physiological stimuli and does not result in an immune response. In contrast, necrosis is a form of cell injury causing premature death of cells. Resulting after exposure to a physical or chemical injury, necrosis is the explosive outcome often associate with cell death. The cell membrane loses its integrity due to the swelling of the cytoplasm, mitochondria and organelles. There is no vesicle formation and no energy requirement. The cell simply lies, fragmenting the DNA randomly. Necrosis affects groups of cells at a time and consequently causes an immune response. Apoptosis theoretically can stop cancer in its tracks. However, an important hallmark of cancer is to prevent death of the cell lineage by avoiding the physiological process of apoptosis. The most common mutation involving apoptosis and cancer development is within the p53 gene. When cells are damaged or compromised, the p53 gene will activate and send suicidal signals in order to prevent further damage to neighboring cells. If the mutation occurs, E53 will lose its function and compromised cells will grow uncontrollably, leading to cancer. In contrast, the role of necrosis comes after the establishment of cancer, due to either cell death in response to chemotherapy, or to death of cells surrounding the cancer. Therefore, it is apparent that the role of necrosis comes into play after cancer has been established in the cell. In summary, both apoptosis and necrosis are a feature of cancer, but each have very different roles in cell death and cancer growth.